Welcome to University Drive, your pathway to the transformational work of University of the Bahamas. Our goal is to build a better Bahamas by shaping tomorrow's leaders today, finding solutions to challenges, and forging new opportunities for growth. University Drive, where faculty, staff, students, and alumni travel the road of progress together with you. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of University Drive, the podcast and talk show that keeps you connected to all things University of the Bahamas. I'm your host, Nikki Bo, and today we're diving into a celebration of legacy, excellence, and the power of giving back. As UB commemorates its 50th anniversary, we are thrilled to highlight one of the most prestigious events of the year the President's Soiree and Hall of Fame and Outstanding Alumni Awards. This event shines a well-deserved spotlight on the incredible contributions of our alumni, who are not just the backbone of this institution, but also key drivers of national development. Alumni play a pivotal role in shaping the identity and future of any university, and UB is no exception. Their accomplishments inspire the next generation and reflect the caliber of education and experiences gained here at UB. Today, I'm honored to welcome two ex three outstanding guests, two of whom are recipients of this year's Alumni Awards, who exemplify what it means to be part of the Mingo's legacy. Joining me today are Ms. Sharon Poitier, the Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, Ms. Tamika Lundy, the Outstanding Alumni Award recipient from the class of 1994, and Mr. Alvardo Thompson, Director of Alumni Services. They will share their incredible journeys, the impact UB has had on their lives, and their hopes for the future of our alma mater. So let's dive right into this inspiring conversation that celebrates the heart and soul of UB. Let's get started. I'm gonna start with both of you, Ms. Poitier. Well, welcome, welcome to University Drive, to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be on the other side. Let's see what's in store. <laughs> Indeed. Both of you, what was your initial response when you were notified that you had been selected as the Lifetime Achievement Reward Award recipient and the Outstanding Alumni Award recipient, respectively? Well, certainly for me, the um, Lifetime Achievement Awardee, I was shocked. I was like, oh, they, they don't mean me, right? Um, they're not serious, right? Um, I just didn't expect anything like it. So I, w I was shocked, honored, but shocked. Well, when I saw the email in my inbox, I thought it was an action item for me because I am a I am an employee of University of the Bahamas, so I thought they were telling me that another Tamika was being selected for the Outstanding Alumna Honor. But once it sank in that it was actually me, I, I was very humbled. I It was humbling because when I think of the caliber of graduates that have come out of this awesome institution and to be numbered among those who are considered outstanding, I thought that that was just you know, a marvelous achievement for me. And I, I was humbled. And I am, and to this day, I'm still very honored um, to be included in, in such an, an accolade that's being extended. Ladies, I want you to take um, our listeners on a journey of your time here at UB. Ms. Sharon Poitier, if I'm not mistaken, you were a part of the first intake of the then College of the Bahamas. And I'm going to ask you to Chronicle that journey, that experience, what it meant to you to be part of the, you know, that inaugural class here at the College of the Bahamas, and for you both to share your experiences um, here at the institution. Um, well, for me, I was part of the graduation class of 1975 at the Government High School. And so the transition ordinarily would have been that we would have gone into the A-level program at 
GHS, lower six and then upper six. But of course we know that the College of the Bahamas um, absorbed lower and upper six. So I moved into COB, the then COB at the, um, I think it was the old BTC campus where C.A. Thompson Jr. I is now. And so I was part of that initial A-level program at COB. And so most of my classes had to do with that, had to do with A-level, A-level history, A-level literature, and some economics. And the way that the classes were structured we were able to do A-levels and the associate's degree program at the same time. And so um, the transition um, for me was rather um, smooth, I guess, because I was moving with my former classmates, many of my former teachers um, who had come over from the government high school. And so that was the, I guess, the initial transition um, for me. And um, I think for us, we had just been two years out of independence. And so we were very, very idealistic what we wanted to do for the country, what we hoped that the country would do for us. Um, and so that was the thrust of, of many of our conversations. You know, how did we make this thing called independence work, not only for the country, for ourselves, for our colleagues, et cetera. So that, that was basically that um, part of my journey at, at COB. It was a two-year um, journey. We graduated in 1977 after completing the A-level program. Um, at COB, and like I said, we were able to get the associate's degree at the same time. Um, you know, I often lament, uh, well, I often say to, to students who lament that college um, fees are so high, and I remember looking at an old bill from COB. I was taking 18 credits. And can you imagine that the tuition fee that I had to pay at that time was $18, $1 per credit. And so that for me was, boy, we've come a long way, you know. But um, my years at, at COB were, were very, very good years. Um, I met quite a number of new people. Um, people who had been in other high schools and, you know, there was a keen rivalry between high schools back in those days. And so these rivals now uh, were becoming friends. And so COB did that uh, for me as well, broadened the horizon, um, opened new opportunities, that kind of thing. So I think I'll end there. Thank you for sharing that, Ms. Lundy. Tamika, I'm going to ask you to share your experience, which would have come in a different time and era. Um, and, and I'm sure it will help us to see the growth and evolution of the college as well as you share your, your time and your experience here at the institution. Wow, um, Nikki, I don't know how much to share. I don't know what to go on the record about, and I don't know what to keep secret and, and hidden. But Suffice it to say that I, I entered the college, former College of the Bahamas at the tender age of 16. That was about 30 years ago. Um, I was as green as they came. I was really green. I mean, fresh out of high school, um, Prince William's High School. I was the head girl at Prince Will. And so I was a part of that. I'm going to keep order. I'm, I, I had the mindset that, you know, everything had, you had to be proper, you had to act properly, nothing could be out of place. And so I was very um, dutiful and obedient, right? But being in an environment where you pretty much didn't have the kind of stringent oversight that you had in high school, it, it wasn't long before I took full advantage of that. So I, 
I did have my mischievous moments, but um, I will say that out of all of the tertiary institutions that I've attended in my life, being a student at the College of the Bahamas at COB is the most meaningful for me even to this day. Um, I, when I, when I was a student at COB back in the 90s, the early 90s, and that would have been from 91 to 94, I shared the campus with people like Clarence Roll, who's now um, the Bahamas Film, Film Commissioner, and Eric Rose, who's carved out a path of the Bahamas Information Services. I had classes with um, people like Hadassah Hall, um, who's now Delavo, who, who was in charge of communications at, at BTBI and some, some other people who come to mind. On any given day, I would see uh, Fred Propal walking across the campus with his T-square, going to the T-block or playing on the, on the, the basketball team while Cynthia Mother Pratt was coaching them um, on the field. And so these were some of these are some of the recollections that I have um, of that era. Um, myself, along with my very dear friend, who's one of my best friends still today. She was Dequisha Thomas, Dequisha Johnson at that time. She's Thomas now. Um, we matriculated through COB and we, we we took advantage of what still today is the academic rigor of the institution. You know what I mean? Like faculty members were and still are today um, very conscientious and they ensured that you, the, the standard that they held you to was a very um, high one, right? So Marjorie Cheatham, who was um, one of the lead faculty members in the School of Communications back at that time, she ensured that every student who she taught knew that there was a very high standard that you had to meet. And so um, when I look back and I and I think about today and where how far I've come, it's it's really a full circle moment to have been a student at COB back at that time and to now be in senior administration and to be working along with some of the faculty members who taught me. Because uh, Marie, Dr. Marie Sersing, she taught me one of my English uh, courses and Miss Janice Munnings, who's still here today, she taught me another English class, right? Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm just deeply grateful. And, you know, my memories, my time at COB, they are very precious and dear to me. Thank you both for sharing that um, and those memories of COB and, and your time here. Tamika, you mentioned something that will help me to segue into my next question. You um, mentioned the likes of Maria Searsing, and I was writing down and things were going through my head, so I didn't get all of the other names. But I want to ask you, as you reflected on your journey through COB, can you think of people that would have had a positive impact on your, not just your academic journey, and Tamika, you mentioned some of your friends, but I wanna reflect on some of the lecturers here, and you spoke about the academic rigor and the conscientiousness of lecturers and professors. Who are some of those people that had a lasting impact and in some instances would have helped you at that time, at that young ripe age of 16, 17, to identify some of your strengths and talents and recognize some of the things that you may not have known at that time that you possessed and help to shape who you would have become as an adult? So I earned an Associate of Arts degree in journalism and mass communications, right? So even from a young child, I was, also, I was always fascinated with writing. I always was writing something, right? Some poetry or essay or something. I was always writing. And um, writing just was my happy place, even now to this day, right? And so having a mentor, having a guide like Mrs. Cheatham, Marjorie Cheatham, I was very grateful for that because she did not allow you to drop the bar. She always wanted you to level up. And so one of the highlights of my time of learning at COB was the practical learning that I was engaged in and my peers were engaged in 
who were in the program. And that was through writing for the Spectrum newspaper. We had to bring the Spectrum out for one whole academic year. And we did that. We had to investigate. We had to cover the beat on campus. We had to do our first drafts, right? We had to make sure that our stories were balanced, that they made sense, that they were, were, were grammatically correct, that they were appealing to the audience that we were writing for, you know? And so that was... That was deeply impactful for me. I mentioned um, Marie Sarah Singh and Janice Munnings who taught me English, but I also vividly recall my video classes and my photography classes with Rodman Forbes, who just recently retired um, from the institution. He was in media services here um, at UB. And who could forget, you could not take government and politics at COB with Felix Bethel and ever forget Mr. Bethel, right? So I, I, I would like to say that my time here at COB was my awakening, right? And a part of the awakening that happened in me was tied to the realization and the understanding that my pursuits, my aspirations, they are within the context of me helping to cause my country to be better and to be greater. And you have to know where you came from as a country and your recent history and your long time history and Felix Bethel just put that all, forced us all to know it and to have an understanding and appreciation for it. Um, and, and so you can't, you, you know, he is, he's someone I would never forget. And of course, also Haldane Chase um, as well from back in the day. And so, you know, one of the things that, that I've, I was tickled pink about um, when, I, when I thought about it recently and when I bumped into her on campus is that one of my primary school teachers, one of my primary school teachers, Renee Chase, um, was also working at UB up until quite recently. And so to be working at the same place where my primary school teacher it, uh, was, was now working, you know, it was just, you know, all these things just was really um, inspiring for me. Hope I didn't run on too long, but yeah, those are, those are, are my comments to that. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing that. Ms. Poitier, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you the same question. Who were the people that helped to shape you? Um, you indicated that you would have been a part of the program where you would have gotten your A-levels and associates at the same time, um, and it was a two-year program. And you indicated, too, that some of the teachers from the then government high school transitioned. But who were some of the people, some of the lecturers that you would have encountered that would have had a very profound impact on your life and the career that you were embarking on? Because you didn't mention what your degree is. And I'm going to ask, I mean, well, your, your specialty, um, you indicated an associate's, but you didn't indicate the area. So I'm going to ask you to delve into that, please. Okay. I, I took courses that would lead to A-levels in history and English literature. And there were, like I said, some economics courses as, as well. But the two subjects that I would focus on would be history A-level and English literature A-level. The lecturers at that time, who I suppose had a a pivotal role in, in shaping who I am, even to this day, would be the late Kevin Bethel, um, who transitioned with us from the government high school to COB. Claire Smith Hepburn, who taught um, history. Jean Knowles, who also taught history. Marjorie Brooks Jones, who taught English literature. Miss Thomas, I don't remember Miss Thomas's um, first name, but she also taught literature, particularly um, Chaucer, the um, plays of Chaucer. And so those would have been the, the people who would have had a, an integral role in shaping who I am, not only showcasing that academic was um, important, but also character deportment was also important. Um, doing well, uh, Kevin Bethel always used to say to us at the government high school, you wear the color of royalty, royal blue. So you are 
royalty at that rate. And so that transition um, all the way through. And I think it was, well, I come from a, a family of educators. And so there was no question in my mind, even as a little girl, that I would become a teacher. I used to teach my dolls. I used to teach the kittens and the puppies if they would stay still long enough. Um, so I always knew that I wanted to teach. And then, of course, I was shaped by those teachers of excellence that I mentioned, the Kevin Battles of the day, the Claire Smith Hepburns of, of the day. And, and I, I always say this to Claire Smith Hepburn, she was and still is my favorite teacher. And so I, I can thank them for the person that I am because it is on their shoulders that I stand. Also, those um, persons in my immediate family who were educators, my adoptive mother, Emma Poitier, who was also at the College of the Bahamas when I transitioned there. Um, she was in the School of Education. And so um, that, too, helped to, to shape my career in education. And I moved through the ranks from classroom teacher all the way up to um, Ministry of Education headquarters, um, retiring uh, two years ago um, from the position of Deputy Director of Education. So those persons that I mentioned um, played a role in, in who I am, and I'm eternally grateful to them. Ms. Nikki, I, I, Nikki okay. I just wanted to... I just wanted to add, you heard all of the names that, that, that Sharon Poitier just listed off a moment ago. Like those are, those are iconic nation builders. builders. Of, mm -hmm. uh, just, just, you couldn't, you know, when I was a student, you couldn't attend COB and not feel like you were not in the presence of greatness. And it was, it was really inspirational. I just wanted to add, you know, Shout out, kudos to all of the faculty members, past and current, of the of the institution. Miss Poitier, before you go, are you not also a uh, uh, an adjunct faculty member here? Or I certainly. Because you I left that out, and it would be remiss of me. I certainly was. I I was there from um 2005 up until just um last semester, actually. Um, and so I, I think I'm taking this retirement thing a little too seriously. And so I kind of stepped back from, from that role. Um, but um, UB, COB will always be uh, important to me. Um, I also served um, for a time on the college council when the late um, P. Basil Donaldson was chair. And so COB, UB has always been constant in my life. And so, yes, um, I mm. did serve as an adjunct professor. Miss Lundy, you too, y'all are, y'all are leaving out some very important details for our listeners. Cause Miss Lundy, you're also an adjunct faculty member. Y'all talking about y'all experiences as a student and, you know, Miss Lundy, you spoke about your transition and coming full circle into senior admin, but you're also having that impact on our students, the way that your teachers had an impact on you. I'm having some kind of an impact. I'm terrorizing students as an adjunct faculty, teaching them intro to news writing. I've also um, taught um, business communications. And so, yes, I am terrorizing them like I was terrorized. No, just kidding. <laughs> just well, kidding. I am imparting the benefit of what I know and my experience and the hopes and, and that it will be beneficial for them. And so... I thoroughly enjoy it. I mean, one of the things I, you know, as I was teaching the other night, I, in the same room where I was a student in the F5 classroom, I was teaching my students and I was just standing there having a moment of nostalgia and thinking back to the way that the room looked a little bit differently and how it's transitioned up to today. And like, wow, I was actually sitting here listening to the expert imparting into me, now I am that person. And so 
This is what we talk about when we talk about how University of the Bahamas and how COB's mission is all connected integrally to national development. Because well, when you are cultivating and nurturing the talents and inspiring the imaginations of um, our young people to go out and to build, this is what it is all about. And so, yes, I'm a, a faculty, I'm an adjunct faculty member here and working in senior administration, a graduate and the parent of a graduate and the parent of an adjunct faculty member. Ooh, yeah. You COB runs through your veins, ladies and gents. Mr. Thompson, you've been quiet, but get ready to open your mic on the other side of the break because I'm coming to you. And I also want to touch on um, when we come back something that both of you referenced, and it was a it's about the impact um, that being an alum has on students to want to build a better Bahamas. You're listening to University Drive. We take our first break. We'll be right back. Chapter One Bookstore is proud to serve the students, faculty, and staff of the University of the Bahamas and the community at large. We are the premier choice for the purchase of university textbooks and supplies and UB logo apparel, paraphernalia, and gifts. We also carry a wide variety of school supplies, learning aids, and leisure books. Visit our coffee center for all of your printing, copying, and binding needs. Chapter One Bookstore is located on the ground floor of the Michael H. Eldon Complex on University Drive. Shop with us on Monday through Saturday. You can contact us at 397-2650 or email at chapter1 at ub.edu.bs. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Chapter One Bookstore. Chapter One, the premier choice. Welcome back to University Drive. If you're just joining us, we're having a very enlightening conversation and we are highlighting um, an incredible milestone, which is the university's 50th anniversary. And as we conclude this year's celebrations, we are doing so with the President's Soiree and the Hall of Fame and Outstanding Alumni Award Scala, where we will honor our exceptional alumni whose impact resonates locally and globally. On our show today are Ms. Sharon Poitier, the recipient of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award, a testament to the decades of dedication, excellence, and leadership in the field of education, and Ms. Tamika Lundy from the class of 1994, whose accomplishments have earned her the Outstanding Alumni Award. Both of these ladies are very modest. Um, if it's one thing that I can say, and I know both of them, and I just think that you are both very well deserving of this honor and this award. And when you shared your journey about your time here at COB and UB having gone from being a student to being a um, adjunct faculty member, you have been intimately involved in the life of this university over a number of years and decades. Um, Ms. Poitier, you spoke and and. Actually, Mr. Thompson, before I go to them, I'm going to bring you in on this conversation. We also have um, Mr. Alvaro Thompson, who is the Director of Alumni Services um, with us today. Mr. Thompson, you've been responsible for this award ceremony for quite a number of years. Why is it important for us to honor and recognize um, outstanding alumni who are making a contribution and may you please share with us who the other award recipients are for this year as we celebrate our 50th anniversary. Yes, and good morning and thank you so much, Ms. Poe. It's, it really warmed my heart listening to my two fellow panelists today, just walking down memory lane and listen, listening to all those good memories. Here, here at UB, we are establishing a rich tradition and culture of honoring all of our alumni um, here at the University of the Bahamas. And so it is with this honor that um, the University of the Bahamas, along with our alumni association, we are honoring nine awardees this year in our Jubilee anniversary. And so I'm honored to to mention 
all of the nine awardees, honorees for this year's President's Worry and Hall of Fame Alumni Awards Gala. Starting off first with our earliest class, we'll be honoring in the Emerging Leader category, Mr. Ashley Knowles, who's the Director of Greek Life here at the University of the Bahamas, and Mr. Alfonso Major, who's the, who's the Director of Anglican Schools. Then we move on to the Trailblazer Award category, and so in this category, we'll be honoring uh, Dr. Nakora Stubbs-Young. She's also an, an assistant professor here at the University of the Bahamas. And Crystal Rutherford Ferguson, who's an attorney and chief operating officer at the Bahamas at, Baham, at the Bahamian Asset Holding Company and former chair of the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce and Employers Confederation. Next, in the Outstanding Alumni Award category, we'll be honoring Ms. Talik, Ms. Tamika Lundy who's our Assistant Vice President of University Relations at the University of the Bahamas. And also in that category is Dr. Nakia Forbes, who's the Director of the National HIV AIDS and Infectious Disease, Disease Program in the Bahamas. And of course, lastly, in the Hall of Fame category, we'll be honoring Mr. Merritt Storr, who's Managing Partner at Providence Law Firm, and Mr. Mark Munnings, who's Managing Director at Deloitte Bahamas. And then finally, Ms. Sharon Poitier, who is the sole Lifetime Achievement Awardee. And of course, she's a veteran educator and retired deputy director of the Ministry of Education. So those are all of our honorees for this year's Hall of Fame Presence Worry and Hall of Fame Alumni Awards Gala. Thank you so much, Mr. Thompson. I'm going to piggyback off of that and I'm going to share the, the years. So the emerging leaders would have graduated in 2014. The Trailblazers were part of the class of 2004. The Outstanding Alumni Award recipients are from the class of 1994. And the Hall of Fame Award inductees will come from the class of 1984. And you said the sole Lifetime Achievement Award. We heard her say earlier that she was part of the first um, intake at the College of the Bahamas transitioning from the government high school. So I'm going to segue now. Thank you so much, Mr. Thompson. I'm going to bring you back on so that we can get more details about the soiree and the awards gala. But I want to piggyback off of something that Ms. Poitier and Ms. Lundy shared in our first segment. And Ms. Poitier said that, you know, at the time that she was here, um, they were two years out of independence and very idealistic. And Ms. Ms. Lundy Tamika mentioned having lecturers like Felix Bethel and the awakening and the realization that her pursuits and aspirations were, were tied to the country to be greater and better. How did COB instill in you the sense of national pride and knowing that what you were working towards was to build a better Bahamas and to contribute to the country's growth and development? Well, certainly for me, um, like I said, because the transition from the government high school to the College of the Bahamas was such a seamless one. Um, one of the, I guess, the main thrust as students at GHS was um, service. You know, you, you, you get what you have so that you can inspire others, help others, etc. And so that continued. And when we talked about independence, 1973, we are now in 1975. We are part of that um, fledgling grouping of persons who are here to help to mold, to help to shape, to help to serve. And so it was simply a, a, a part of us. And certainly for me, it was part of my family history, part of my church history. Um, and so service has always been something that I aspired to. And so um, COB simply concretized or crystallized all of that um, for me. You know, you weren't doing what you were doing only for you, but, but for others as, as well. And while that message in some shape or form may not have been spoken every day overtly, you knew that it was there. It, it was the underlying message throughout, um, you know, that, that um, 
We have a country to build. We have a nation to build. And you are part of that. You are a part of that. And do not shirk that responsibility. So that, that I, I think, was the unspoken rule for all. Nikki, for me, higher ed is, it's like a virtuous cycle, a cycle of education, of research, of innovation and service. And all those things are pillars of, of the mission of UB, right? Um, higher ed, University of the Bahamas, it's, it operates in what I'd like to think is like an ecosystem, an environment that feeds it and that it enriches. So there's a huge synergy that's connected to nation building. COB was where I got my roots, right? And we all know that you want to build your house on a firm foundation. So your foundation has to be strong, right? You have to have deep roots. And my years at COB is where I was deeply rooted. I'm a first generation university student in my family. And I, 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 I treasure that. And I always think about that. And while I was a student at COB, I barely paid. I barely paid because I was on two scholarships. One came from the Bahamas Oil Refining Company Limited. And the other came from Bahamas Supermarkets. And what that said to me is that there are there, there's corporate Bahamas out there. There are companies and entities out there that believe in the power of higher learning and that make investments in higher learning so that it could feed that very same cycle um, that I talked about and that ecosystem that I talked about. Um, last week, when we had our academic honors convocation, um, one of the highlights of our 50th anniversary celebrations. Our chair, Allison Maynard Gibson, reminded us of something that Keva Bethel said many years ago. And she said, I dare to hope for a Bahamas in which various social entities, family, school, church, government, private sector, and civil society as a whole will work together in consistent, mutually supportive ways to develop men and women who have the will and the confidence to take greater responsibility for themselves and their actions, and who will draw upon their individual abilities for that purpose. That is a call for us today, even today. And so being uh, my time of being a student at COB and even now, all those many years ago and even up to now, there is an awareness and there is an understanding of what my responsibility is as a citizen of this country and as a citizen of the world. Wow, that was powerful, particularly that quote from um, Keva Bethel shared by our chair, Alison Maynard Gibson. And both of you said there was this awareness and understanding of what it meant to be a citizen of this country and this world. And Ms. Poitier, you mentioned that there was this underlying message that you had a country and a nation to build and that your education and what you were doing, the pursuits of all things good, were not necessarily selfishly motivated. And it wasn't about the I, but about what I can do for my country rather than what my country can do for me. And seeing a greater purpose and meaning into everything and realizing that you were going to be a nation builder. And I think both of you in your own way are nation builders you're still, you've helped to shape many minds and you will continue to help to shape minds, not just in the classroom, but outside of the classroom through your civic engagement. I know you're both very civic minded as well. And I think sometimes we underestimate the power that we have individually to make an impact. And we underestimate the power of being part of this bigger ecosystem that Ms. Lundy mentioned that is the College of the Bahamas and the University of the Bahamas. Um, <clears throat> I want us to talk now too about your future hopes and dreams for the institution. Mr. Thompson, I'm gonna bring you in on this as well. And then I want us to delve into some of the details of the president's soiree and to invite the general public to, to attend this event that promises to be a spectacular one 
as we culminate our celebrations during our 50th anniversary year. But Ms. Poitia and Ms. Lundy, um, when you think about COB and UB and the um, transitions and the various phases of the institution, um, its growth and development over the years from whence we came, as, as people like to say, what are your future hopes and dreams for this institution that you hold so very near and dear to your heart? Well, certainly for me, the, the whole thrust in academic excellence, I would um, want that to, to continue. I would hope that students in the students now and students in the, the future would have a greater uh, sense of service, of volunteerism. Um, I would like to see, and I've lamented this, and you know, so so often, the university sits in an historic, liberated African community, the community of Grants and Bain Town. I would like to see in the, the future a greater cohesion of the University of the Bahamas and the community which surrounds it. What I see and what I, I witnessed um, often as I sat in my car in the parking lot um, waiting for my classes um, to begin, because that's another thing that's instilled in us, time and, and being on time. So my classes would start at six o'clock and from five o'clock I'm sitting in the, the parking lot. And what I would witness um, person walking through the, the campus to get from wherever they, they were leaving from to get to their homes. And they're walking through the gates of COB to get over to where they are. And I'm thinking they're walking through the university, but they're not of the university. And so I'd like to see a greater cohesion in, in that regard. Spirit of volunteerism, you'll be embracing the communities that um, surround them. Thank you very much, Miss Lundy. The mic is yours. I want to echo um, Ms. Poitier's sentiments on the note of service. Service should be an intrinsic part of who we are as a university and as a nation. No man, no woman is an island. We are a part of a whole. We are a part of a whole. When you think about the state of our society right now, where we are as a community, the extraordinary achievements, right? The gains, the wins, the triumphs. But when you take note and stock of those things that are not so great about us, those gaps, those things that we struggle with that are threatening to overwhelm us, that we want to beat back, right? Um, we need to think about ourselves as being a part of a whole. We are a part of a village, or we should be, a tribe, a community of supporters, an extended family helping to pull each other up and helping us to win and to to climb higher. And so my hopes, my dreams, I, 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 I just want to encourage everybody who is listening, and particularly though students of University of the Bahamas, go forth. Go forth. Let your university experience at UB be a testament to and a lesson in resilience and going forth. Defy the odds. Leave the naysayers in your rear view. Don't even pay them no mind. Like if, if there is a boundary, there is a way forward. Embrace the disruption. Don't shy away from it. Embrace disruption for evolution. Be kind, preserve people's dignity. But remember too, that in all that we do and all that we, we aspire to, that it really should be about building community, lifting up, and um, making our village stronger. Ladies, thank you both very much for those very sage words. Um, and 
you know, the 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 common thread and the core that both of you um struck was that that whole notion about service um and giving of ourselves to others to uplift um and to build others up. And Tamiki, you said that service should be an intrinsic part of our existence. And I wholeheartedly agree with you. And then you also spoke about resilience and building community and embracing disruption for evolution. But something that you both echoed, a sentiment that you both echoed was how do we become, how do we have a more lasting impact in the community in which UB is situated, the Bain, the historic Baines and Grantstown community. And Ms. Poite, you mentioned that you see a lot of people walking through the university, but they are not of the university. And I think this um, can serve as a clarion call for us to really go out there into the community to really draw people in and for them to realize um, the historic nature. And, I, and Ms. Poite, you said that your A-levels were in history and English literature. So you have a, an affinity for history, I would assume. But I think we one thing we are, are missing or, or that we're forgetting is that as older generations die, there's a part of our history that will die as well if we do not pass it on. And I think a lot of our younger generations are not deeply connected to the history of, of the Bahamas because they live a different reality and it was not their existence. And so there seems to be this disconnect. But I think that is a role that the university can also play in ensuring that we maintain and preserve our history. We're going to be running out of time pretty soon. Um, and when I think about the alumni awards and honoring our alumni, you know, a big part of and a big thrust of the Alumni Association and the Alumni Office of Alumni Services is getting alumni to give back. And a lot of times we think that it's monetary, but you both mentioned service. I would like for you to appeal to your fellow alumni and encourage them to give back to the institution and to possibly um, um, suggest ways in which they can give back. What advice would you give to your fellow alumni as it relates to giving back to an institution that would have given them so much and in some instances catapulted there and, and started and catapulted their careers? Well, certainly the um, giving back monetarily, that's, that's um, almost a, a no-brainer, so to speak. Um, but giving back can come in so many different um, formats. Uh, we have young people who are there at the university as students who may need to be mentored, who may need just to see um, a successful role model. And so we can reach out that way. How can I mentor um, some of the young ladies that that I I see um, as as students, you know? Some of them may not have had the kind of role models that we have had. And so they may not be quite aware of how they should carry themselves, um, how they should um, see how, what they should wear, that kind of thing. So mentorship would be part of it. And then, of course, we know that um, students learn differently. And so some may um, find themselves struggling with certain classes. Offer yourselves to be tutors, you know, not necessarily for any um, monetary um, reward coming from it, but certainly just the intrinsic um, reward of knowing that I help a student. And so that can be a part of, of um, give back. Um, you know, and so there, there are any number of, of ways that that alumni, I think, um, can give back to the institution that had such a, a lasting and pivotal role, played such a pivotal role in, in their development and their 
dessas cartas são doze bits que vem trago the three T's that we've known all this while, time, talents, and treasures, right? Same thing about mentorship and being a guide. Um, gift your time. Gift your time. Connect with UB, any number of offices here. There are all kinds of possibilities and ways for you to give back in terms of your time. Your talents, maybe um, you have some kind of expertise Help us with the knowledge sharing and the um, increase of capacity um, that we're also involved in. Um, maybe you have some opportunities for internships for our students, right? And then treasures. It takes finances to grow too, you know. It, it, vision is important and having the human capacity is also important. But, you know, sometimes bottom line, it takes finances as well to grow and to thrive. So whatever gifts that you can give back to the university in that regard. I try to make it a point every year to give back to University of the Bahamas. I am the recipient of kindness and other people who gave. And because the, the scholarships that I was on, it came from money that was earned from somewhere, right? And so I give back because when I think about where we are as a country and where we've come from, I believe in our country and I believe in the capacity of, of Bahamians to, to surge forward in an even greater way. And so as I think about the future and the children that my husband and I have brought into this world, I, I, I try to make it a point to assist in, through philanthropy in whatever way that I can when it comes to University of the Bahamas. And I, I just want to send a clarion call to my pairs, my everyone who's been a graduate of the institution to think of the ways that you can give back and connect with UB today. Thank you so much for that appeal to your fellow alumni. We're going to take another quick break here on University Drive. When we come back, we're going to allow Mr. Thompson to wrap things up as he shares details of the event, um, of the event, sorry, um, where we can, where people can purchase tickets, the date, all of the good stuff that you need to know so that you don't miss this exciting event. We take this quick break here on University Drive. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take your knowledge or career to new heights? Don't wait to invest in your future. Do it now. How? Earn a professional development certificate from University of the Bahamas. Whether you're looking to enhance your leadership abilities, sharpen your technical skills, or explore a new field entirely, our Continuing Education and Lifelong Learning Center has the ideal course for you. We offer single-phase electrical, ethics and procurement, accounting for entrepreneurship, stop managing, start leading, dynamic presentations, digital marketing, superior customer service, and justice of the peace. We even have courses on smartphone photography, TikTok videos, defensive driving, and interacting with difficult people. Or open the door to new languages with English as a Second Language, conversational Chinese, and Spanish in the workplace. Our instructors are experts in their fields and they're here to support you every step of the way. Call us at 302-4449. Enroll today. Welcome back to University Drive. I don't know where the time went, but it flew by rather quickly and we're about to wrap up our show. But before we do so, I want to welcome Mr. Thompson back to the mic. We've heard quite a number, um, quite a bit, sorry, from Ms. Sharon Poitier, who is the Lifetime Achievement Award recipient and Ms. Tamika Lundy, who is the Outstanding Alumni Award recipient. As you know, the university would have celebrated its 50th golden jubilee anniversary this year and as we culminate the celebrations we are doing so with the president's soiree and the outstanding sorry hall of fame and outstanding alumni awards gala mr thompson please provide our listeners with details regarding the event um date venue time where they can purchase tickets and how they can be a part of this um, amazing event and what may be some of the highlights of the event that people will want to definitely not miss. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Nikki. And so, yes, as you mentioned, this is the culmination of 
our 15th anniversary jubilee and all the events that we've held and had this past year. And so I'm happy to say that tickets are tickets are on sale at Chapter One Bookstore, lo um, located on University Drive. And so you can come in, purchase your tickets um, here at Chapter One Bookstore um, between Monday to Friday, um, between nine to five. Uh, tickets will be on sale straight up until the event. The date for the President's Soiree and Hall of Fame Alumni Awards Gala is Saturday, December 7th at the Bahama Convention. And so we would like to invite all of our alumni to come out and attend, come out and enjoy yourself, come out and meet university officials. Some of your past professors will most likely be in attendance. So come out and help celebrate this 50th Jubilee anniversary with us. Um, also, some of the highlights is for that night is that we will be entertained by the university's choir. And so we're happy to highlight um, a lot of the talent that we have here at University of the Bahamas. Our university choir will be um, singing. Um, also, we have um, our alum alumni band, Jam Session, will be there to um, jam all night with us and entertain us. Our, our host will be Bodine Johnson, a fellow UB alumna. And so, yeah, please come out and, and enjoy yourself. We'll be having a very special 50th anniversary um, exhibit that you can come come and enjoy, do a, a walk, a stroll down memory lane with us. And a, a lot of um, very good uh, memorabilia will be on display. We also have a silent auction for you to participate in. And so, yeah, we just like to encourage all of our alumni, Corporate Bahamas, to purchase tickets um, or um, purchase a table at this event. If you cannot attend, um, you can also make a donation. You can contact myself here and here at the Alumni Affairs office. Uh, my number is 302-4303, or you can reach me at email um, elvado.thompson at ub.edu.bs. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. And as we wrap up, I want to give our two honorees um, one final word, and I want you to reflect and share what the institution's motto of knowledge, truth, and integrity means to you. And how do we all, how do you encourage um, everybody that's a part of the university community and our country too, um, to embody that? What is the significance in your mind of knowledge, truth, and integrity? And how should we be guided by that as we work on building a better Bahamas? Well, certainly for me, when I think of, of knowledge, I, I'm thinking about lifelong learning that um, you're never too old to learn something new. Um, and you can learn from anyone, you know, not don't just close your, your mind to, well, I can only learn from this group of people or that group or, or this or, you know, or the other. But lifelong learning for me, that's, that's the, the knowledge part. Um, truth would be exactly what it is, um, you know, truth to power, um, speaking um, with, speaking truth, honesty, that kind of thing. And then, of course, integrity, making sure that what you say and what you do align, um, that there, there's nothing false about it, that, that there's, there's a pureness, a purity that um, comes from within that um, you understand that your word is your bond, that, um, you know, I, I was raised by a grandmother who always talked about the fact that your good name is all that you have. And so you want to make sure that... Um, you keep that, you maintain that. And so, um, you know, the, the, the motto sums up for me what life is, is all about and what life ought to be all about. Um, sadly, in some instances, we've kind of moved away from, from some of that. Um, you know, we, we focus heavily on materialism and um, not so much uh, integrity, truth, honesty, and 
um, lifelong learning. And so I, I would like for us to get back to, to some of that because that's the essence of, of who we are and who we ought to be. For me, knowledge, truth, and integrity is an act is a call to act. Um, it's also for us to cement community and to honor our purpose as individuals, as a community, as a society. Be the ripple that is building up. Let every interaction that you have be one where you are uplifting somebody and we're all preserving each other's dignity. We tend to overthink things a little a little bit. And I, I keep going back to being kind. I've been picking up some on some, we're we're kind of trending towards interactions that are unkind. We need to get back to our roots of being kind and building people up. Also for all of the good that that has been achieved within our country and by our conscientious citizens, there's even better on the horizon. And we need to continue to work towards that, work towards the better that is out there. Um, let's fan the flames of hope. And that, that one is not political. Let's fan the flames of hope um, because we are all overcomers. And that's my final word. Ladies and gent, thank you so very much for joining me today on this episode of University Drive. It has been quite an enlightening conversation um, and thank you for sharing your journeys here at COB and UB, the role that the institution has played in shaping your success, the advice that you've given to um, to all of us, and I wouldn't limit it, and, and even to and your, your call to action to fellow alumni, um, and your hopes for the future of your beloved alma mater. I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation, and I want to encourage all of our listeners to attend this President's Soiree and the Hall of Fame and Outstanding Alumni Awards Gala that will take place on Saturday, December 7th at the Bahama Convention Center. It promises to be a spectacular event. And thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of University Drive. It's been enlightening and it has filled my heart with joy to hear the stories and the 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 nostalgia of your time here at the institution. And we look forward to all of the other great things that you will do as you continue to positively contribute to not only the growth and development of our institution and your alma mater, but our country as well, and by extension, the world. And for this podcast and for more UB information, be sure to visit our website at www.ub.edu.bs. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And join us next week, same time, same radio station, for another exciting edition of University Drive. I'm your host, Nikki Bo. My guest today has been Ms. Sharon Poitier, Mr. Mikalendi, and Mr. Alvaro Thompson. And thank you again to all three of you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.